Welcome, everybody. Fantastic to have you here. This is one of my two favorite days of the year. This is the time when the network works, when we bring the pieces together of these incredible conservationists and the supporters that make it all happen. So thank you all for being here. I know you had other choices. I know you, there's the Cherry Blossom Festival going on in Japantown today, the Sea Otter Classic. It's the third round of the Masters Golf Tournament. Tiger Woods is looking to get his fifth green jacket, and maybe you've been working all week, and you've got two seven-year-old kids, and you want to be on a couch with a beer watching. Oh, that's me. I'm sorry. <laughs> but thank you for being here. It is going to be a fantastic day. And I want to start off by thanking our sponsors, Safari West. <laughs> and I also want to thank the over 50 volunteers who've given up their Saturday to come and help us here. Thank you for that. But I want to save the biggest thanks for the incredible WCN staff. They work tirelessly. Uh, the amount of conservation work that they do, the funds raised with 20 people is just phenomenal. And so I know they hate when I do this, but if you could, the WCN staff, if you could just come up on the stage briefly, so be acknowledged. And before you clap, I'll, I'll give you a chance to clap in a second here. I just wanted to relate a story. I was on where, how far WCN has come. I was talking to my mother two days ago, and she said, oh, Charlie, I just want to say how incredible the annual report is. You did such a beautiful job. And I said, Mom, I actually saw it for the first time when you saw it. That's how good the staff is. So please, these are the people that make it happen, who work tirelessly, not only on this event, but 365 days a year, ensuring that your gifts are the most impactful they can be to further conservation. So please, the WCN staff. And, and I'm going to tell you in a minute how WCN doesn't have any paid fundraising staff, but in fact, all of us and all of our conservationists are fundraising staff. So when you see them coming up to talk to you, you might want to go the other way. So, no, please talk to them. They are, they are the heroes that make WCN run. Thank you all. So by show of hands, how many people, is this your first WCN Expo? I'm always amazed. Where have you been for the last 17 years? Welcome. I'm glad you finally found us. Uh, by show of hands, how many people have been f somewhere between two and five Expos? Between six and 10 Expos? 11 and 15 Expos? More than 15 Expos? Crazy. It's amazing. So we're thrilled, thrilled to have you here, and, and since we have some new people here, I want to say a few words about WCN. Um, these expos are, we hold twice a year in the spring, uh, and uh, in the fall, it's always the second week of October. Uh, this year, we'll have it at Mission Bay Conference Center again, up in the city. We'll have over, it's about two times the size of this, for better or worse. Uh, we have about 20 speakers um, over 60 organizations exhibiting, and this year, Dr. Jane Goodall will join us again for the 10th time. And uh, she'll be at the expo all day, so you can stalk her then, but she's presenting the night before on Friday night, so that'll be October 11th at, at the Masonic Auditorium, and we'll have a special musical guest, who I can't name now, but it'll be Dave Matthews. Um, <laughs> Dave Matthews or Ben Harper, we're, we're one of the two, so it'll be incredible, so put that on your calendar. But about WCN, so we were founded in 2002, and we're really founded around the idea that there are these incredible conservationists who are living and working in the field to save wildlife, working with local communities to develop solutions that benefit not only the wildlife, but the communities as well. But these people are don't necessarily know how to raise money or how to do strategic planning or good board governance. So this opportunity for WCN to come in and make that connection. And from the donor's perspective, and I was a philanthropist before, I, before this day job, and as a philanthropist, I want to know where my money's going, I want that transparency, I want to be able to have a connection, and I want to know it's going efficiently. So that's how WCN was set up, that 100% of your gifts, if you say you wanted to go to Penguins, which is a great choice, 100% of that money will go on the ground. We also do it incredibly efficiently. 
uh, Charity Navigator, which rates over 8,000 organizations on transparency and efficiency, awarded WCN the first perfect 100 score on, on that. So we're very proud of that and how we operate. And we're based up in San Francisco. Um, our annual revenue is about $24 million a year. And you can see we have less than 20 staff, so that's a pretty good ratio of uh, dollars per staff. And, um, and we get stuff done. Uh, so very, very exciting, and uh, glad to have you all have a part, have a part of it. Um, but I'm a bit of preaching to the choir, I and mean, the reason we're all here is because wildlife is in trouble. During my life, half the wildlife on the planet is gone. In the last 25 years, we've lost half of all lions. And since WCN's founding in 2002, there's been over a million pangolins that have been poached for their scales, and it's the most heavily trafficked animal in the world. And it's easy to give up, but my hero and BFF, Jane Goodall, always says there are reasons for hope. And I want to share two of my reasons of hope with you. And the first is these incredible conservationists, many of, of whom you'll hear from today. Of course, our format today is such that we can only have five speakers. So in addition to our incredible conservationists that we have speaking, I also wanted to give a, a shout out to uh, Robin Appleton with Spectacle Bear. Are you here, Robin? Where are you? Back there? And, um, and Dr. Rodney Jackson. Of, where's Rodney? The world's leading snow leopard expert. And then, of course, the terrific conservationists you're going to hear today. And their tireless devotion, being on the front lines, risking their health and, and sanity. Is that fair, Robin? <laughs> yep. Um, to save wildlife is, is what it's all about. And for us to be able to play a role to support them is, is just amazing. And my other reason of hope is all of you. And uh, many of you give a lot financially, and for that we're deeply appreciative. That's the, that is the fuel that makes conservation go. And so many of you give in so many other creative ways. Uh, we have our good friends from um, a company called Ivory Ella here today. And uh, six years ago, they were in college. They heard about the elephant crisis. They wanted to do something. So they called us up and said, hey, we'd like to sell some T-shirts and give you the proceeds. And we said, that's fantastic. We really appreciate that. And about six months later, they said, well, we have your first check. We said, yeah, okay. And they said, it's $300,000. <laughs> we're like, fantastic. And they've, <laughs> they've gone on to now gift to save the elephants and other conservation organizations over 1.6 million dollars. So big shout out to our friends at Ivriella. <laughs> and also with us today is a, a guy named Steve Gold. Uh, Steve came to an expo just like this 15 years ago. Afterwards came up to me and said, Charlie, I'd really like to help. I said, well, what would you like to do? He goes, well, I'm a contractor in the city. I'm really into uh, solar power. What can I do to Help. I said, would it be great if your conservationists all had solar power systems? I said, Steve, that'd be fantastic. And um, so he started doing this and started deploying this. Now he's deployed over 44 uh, solar power systems. He's been funding it himself. He gets his other people. He's had some donations from, from all of you, but he does a lot of uh, funding himself. And so now he's deployed these 44 uh, solar power systems all around the world and just amazing way to contribute. So shout out to Steve. And people who are looking here, figuring out how they, they can engage. So two weeks ago, I got a, a call from um, an email from a guy named Trenton Irwin. So Stanford football fans might recognize him as one of uh, Stanford's stars who just graduated, wide receiver. And he said to me, uh, we, we got together and he said, you know, Charlie, I'm going to be playing in the NFL next year, but the average career in the NFL is three years. And my real passion is around wildlife conservation. How can I help? How can I get engaged? And I said, well, Trenton, we can talk about that. Uh, I said, well, what's your experience? And he says, well, I do have four years' experience taming California bears and also four years' uh, <laughs> <laughs> and four years experience uh, just taking care of Oregon ducks. So I said, Trenton, that's good enough for me. So you'll see Trenton here. He, he looks a lot like me, except... <laughs> He's about 35 years younger, he's buff, and he's six foot two. But other than that, <laughs> and has beautiful blonde hair. Um, so, uh, so there's 
a whole host of ways that you can get involved. And the first step is coming here and hearing these talks, building this community. Talk to the people next to you. Uh, talk to the conservationists. Get involved just doing something because you are my hope for the future. So thank you for being here. Have a wonderful day, and I look forward to talking with all of you.